Next, we want to spend some time now on a story that's already captivated Houston and it is about to captivate the entire country. It's about a woman suspected in the deaths of not one, but two of her romantic partners. A woman whose own son says he's been waiting for her arrest his whole life. Now, her name is Sarah Hartsfield, and she's the subject of a special episode of Dateline tonight on NBC. And right now, our own expert on the case, KPRC 2's Bryce Newberry, is live with us to talk about it. Good morning, Bryce. So, hey, Haley, good morning. Good morning. So a grand jury already indicted Hartfield for murder. Those proceedings are secret, but you were there yesterday to witness two key witnesses who showed up to testify. Is that right? That's right. So she was indicted first for murder back in February, and the Chambers County Grand Jury meets regularly. Uh, and so this this particular grand jury has been impaneled since the beginning of the year, and they will be impaneled through June. And so yesterday they had several cases before them, including uh, the Hartsfield case, and that's when um, our cameras were outside. We were not allowed even on the floor of the courthouse where those uh, discussions were happening, but we were be able to be outside of the courthouse, and that's where we saw uh, the two key witnesses who showed up to testify in the Hartsfield case. The two that we saw were Sarah's oldest daughter. She was there from out of town and was in there talking to the grand jury for several hours. We also saw the emergency room doctor from Houston Methodist Baytown Hospital. That's the doctor that tended to Sarah Hartsfield's fifth husband who died in the hospital in January. So what was the suspicion that led up to the indictment? I know you said the indictments happen regularly, but what was it in this case that led to her indictment? Well, so Joseph Hartsfield was a diabetic, and and on January seventh, he was rushed to the hospital. He uh, had been he was unresponsive, and he went to the hospital. And once he was at the hospital, pretty much everyone in the emergency room, according to court documents, suspected that there was foul play. They the treatments that they were trying to do to him just really uh, didn't seem to be working. And so he died on January 15th. He was there for about eight days and, and then he passed away. So at that time, uh, with that suspicion of foul play, the Chambers County Sheriff's Office, they did start to investigate all of this. And what happened before he was rushed to the hospital according to court documents, is that his sugar tanked dangerously low uh, into the 40s. And when they began their investigation, uh, they found up to 10 insulin pens on his side of the bed. Now, the documents in this case allege that Sarah Hartsfield waited an hour to call 911 after finding him unresponsive, and then also oh. that she ignored a phone app. And Haley, I know you're our, you're our health reporter. He actually had one of those um, Dexcoms uh, uh, one of the a things glucose that monitor. monitors uh, yeah. his sugar. And so there was an app that they actually had uh, both of them, in fact, on their phones that would send alerts uh, based on his sugar level. So they knew when it was going up or down. Bryce, it sounds like you're, you're citing a lot of the court documents. So I, I guess you got your hands on them. Is there any other bombs that were you know revealed during in those court documents? Well, there was a whole slew of court documents that were filed late yesterday in this case. Of course, we were in Chambers County uh, as those grand jury proceedings were happening. And then just late in the afternoon is when those new court documents came in. And I think that the out of all of them, the one that really stands out is a letter from Sarah Hartsfield to the judge explaining why she wants to fire her court-appointed attorney. She does have a court-appointed attorney who uh, has been on this case with her since the very beginning. His name is Keaton Kirkwood. And in that letter, she one of the key things that I think stands out is that she said she wrote to the judge that she has volunteered and asked to do a polygraph test. She also says that she has already asked uh, for a speedy trial and a change of venue. Those are usually things that come later in a case, but she did include that information. She also explained why she wants to get rid of her court appointed attorney. She says that, you know, he <clears throat> has explained to her that it could be two to three years of her sitting in jail while all of the uh, criminal proceedings continue. And so she said she really doesn't want to wait that long because she doesn't want to lose everything that she's worked her entire 
life for. Um, she also, I'm referring to the document over here, she said that when she initially met with him, uh, he told her, that her case was defensible and that reasonable doubt was there without question. So she went into a lot of detail. We, of course, have uh, more on that letter with this story at click2houston.com. But what also got filed yesterday was a document from her court-appointed attorney. He is asking to uh, withdraw from the case. He says that there's a conflict of interest. He basically says that his client, Sarah Hartsfield, has not been willing to follow his legal advice. And at this point, that conflict of interest simply cannot be resolved. But Bryce, you have a lot of this information because of some text messages that she was sending you from jail, is that right? That is right, Haley. So uh, in Chambers County, they've got this kiosk uh, that they installed. It was kind of a pandemic inspired system and it makes it so that inmates there are able to you know, speak with people outside of jail regularly. Of course, during the pandemic, visitors at the jails were not allowed. So that it, it's an app and it's on our phone. And one question that we've got is like, oh, are taxpayers paying for these messages? Actually, Fair. no, okay. we pay per message uh, that gets sent and received. All of that is charged to Channel 2. But we are able to communicate and that's how these messages uh, were coming in. And so she had told us last week that she had filed the paperwork to fire her court appointed attorney. And I wanna show you some of the other messages that she sent us. I know we have some uh, full screens with some of the things that she has said. Oh um, yeah, let's But one of the up. first things that she said was with the ME's findings, the burden of proof for the DA uh, just shifted significantly. They'd almost be crazy to proceed. I wrote my own motion for a bond hearing and mailed it with the letter firing Mr. Kirk and I want to just explain that a little bit. She's talking about uh, the ME's findings here. So initially, when the grand jury indicted her back in February, the manner and means of this murder were unknown, according to the document. It took a little while. It wasn't until uh, March or so that the medical examiner's office got a panel of doctors together. They did a peer review of his autopsy, and that is when they determined that his cause of death was complications of toxic effects of insulin. However, they did not determine the manner of death. So the manner of death could be something like homicide, uh, suicide, accidental, natural causes. So the manner was undetermined. But but the autopsy, what they're really looking at is, is simply the body. So they're not, you know, looking at any of the other factors when they're determining the manner of death, unless it's obvious, something like, you know, gunshot wounds, and they could say it's a homicide. But in this case, they they left it undetermined. So in that message, she's saying, you know, that the, fi the burden of proof for the DA sif shifted significantly. Something else that she said is she, she said she loved Joe, Joseph Hartsfield, her fifth husband, with all she had. And she wrote that my story and the truth have me walking out of this jail free of all the false accusation I've been subjected, in addition to what is seriously character assassination on a nationwide level. So after our story aired uh, with these messages from her, which she watched from her jail cell, she sent a series of overnight messages really all night long to me uh, and, and continued just railing against the reporting that we've done on the case and also explaining her side of things, which we did an update on. Um, but basically she said, if she's guilty of anything, it's picking horrible husbands. So it's really a lot, Haley. We don't you know, hear a lot from, from inmates, but in this case, so early in the case, we have heard so much from Mrs. Hartsfield. That is very interesting. And yeah, you're right. A lot of times their lawyers will keep them from talking to us, but uh, I guess she thinks that she has a story to put out there. So what's gonna happen next? Well, on these issues about a new attorney, because she wants to get rid of her court appointed attorney, our legal expert, Brian Weiss, actually explained to us that that's not something she can just decide. That's something that the judge has to decide. So that's something that is supposed to be discussed in court on Monday. There's also this issue of her bond. So initially, Haley, when she went to jail, uh, she was being held on a $5 million bond. And then on March 1st, the judge in this case lowered it by about $500,000. So 
it brought it down to four and a half million dollars. Well, now there is a second request both, both from Mrs. Hartsfield herself, as well as her court appointed attorney. They both filed and asked for the bond to be reduced once again. That's something that the judge will have to decide. All of that's happening on Monday. And, you know, throughout this case, we've learned about a lot of Sarah Hartsfield's past. She has been married five times. Her fiance was shot and killed by her in 2018 in Minnesota. That was a homicide that was ruled self-defense it was justified according to the prosecutor so she was never charged but that's being investigated again we've also been in touch with several of her exes her children people all over the country who have a past and we're working on a special that you'll be able to see uh, kind of the two sides of sarah which you'll be able to see in the next couple of weeks haley absolutely fascinating thank you for your reporting on this bryce and we appreciate you joining us live this morning you can also watch more on this story on dateline keith morrison makes his own cross-country journey to unravel sarah hartsfield's mysterious past her past lovers wild allegations even the fiance that bryce just mentioned who was shot to death the dateline adventure starts tonight at 8 p.m on kprc2